See now, I wasn't only going to do three videos today. I'm going to do four because I'm going to spend a couple of videos. This is real important. This is saying the same thing that Amos ate in relation to the eclipse on April 8th, 2024 is about, except this is Jeremiah's point of view. And he's talking about only one subject in general, and that's the counterfeit preaching that Amos says starts from April 8th, the ending of preaching a famine coming in the land. So probably between now and the end of this year, we're going to start seeing that. But this is what I want to focus on, is these strong words of Jeremiah. I want to go through the whole chapter, but not in just this video. It's too, too much to go through, too much to comment on. And for anyone who says this is not for us, it's for Israel of old, it says in here, we'll get to that, in the last days you'll consider it perfectly. So that ends it right there. That's for last days. The Father is really angry at all the false teachers. No disrepute against the true ones, but it's people's track record the Father's looking out for. We all have errors. He's looking at the track record. Those with the bad ones, you're in a lot of trouble. Those who, eh, well, you've got to improve and repent of what's wrong, and, and on, on and on it goes. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the L.A.M. Did you notice that word scatter? Right from the get-go. How many denominations are there? How many people are fighting against each other and no two people see eye to eye? Well, they're scattering thousands of denominations. Who knows? Now, I'm non-denominational. Therefore, I'm better. No, you're, you're just as bad. That's what he's talking about. You're not uniting them. You're dividing them. Jeremiah gets right to the point, doesn't he? Therefore, thus say the Elohim of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. It doesn't say they're feeding them correctly. He says they're preaching the hell out of everything and they're contaminating everyone with the whore of Babylon's wine of spiritual fornication. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. Driven them away from what? That which is right, the truth. Of course, and have not visited them. The light's not good, and my vision's not great with this lighting. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Elohim. That's exactly what Amos is saying. A famine of preaching is coming. Paul calls it a falling away. Put them all three together, and we have a bigger part of the story revealed to us. And I will gather... The remnant of my flock. Revelation talks about a remnant too. And Amos says, you'll sit the corn as it as in a sieve, yet not one grain will fall to the ground. Those who are really his won't fall. The rest is going to fall. So here he's gathering the remnant out. The true from the false is what's going on here. Out of all the countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again, to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Those who are sincere and mean it will be fruitful. Those who are not are going to stay right where they are. They're going to grow worse and worse and worse in these last days, take the mark of the beast and whatever. They're just not going to come out. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sick and tired of trying to show people, and they don't want to hear. Who cares? So what? Thumb your nose up at the Father. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I will set up shepherds, What in my videos, I've been saying it, you need to go to my video, the end of preaching is imminent. I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. Well, how is he going to do that? He just told you. He's going to separate the truth from the false and wipe out the false teachers and all these millions of videos and sites on the internet. It just It's just got to go. The people that accrediting themselves as teachers when they haven't been to the cross, tomb, and resurrection training. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the L.A. Read my, or watch my previous video over is April 8th, the most prophetic day in our history. Give you more information on that. Behold the days come, saith the Elohim, that I will raise up 
under David a righteous branch. We see the same thing in Amos chapter 8. To rebuild the tabernacle of David. Do we not see that? And a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall, be, shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he should be called the Elohim our righteousness. Now these are among the 12 tribes of Israel. What did I say in my previous video? There's 144,000 elect overcomers that are going to be sealed before all hell breaks loose. And April 8th is pointing to that. I'm not saying it's that day, but it's pointing to that. We're getting close because all hell can't break loose until the elect overcomers are sealed. But he's talking about all of his people are going to be separated. That's what he's saying here. It's exactly what he's saying. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Elohim, that they shall no more say, the Elohim liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. I went over that in my April 8th, the most prophetic day in history. I did. Why, why are we saying that and not saying that anymore? Because now we're more focused on what? The deliverance that's getting ready to happen. We will have forgotten about all of our troubles and now we're rejoicing. Because now things are changing and the rest of this chapter is illustrating a division taking place. Because now Jeremiah is going to get into condemnation of those in error and those who refuse a love of the truth. Boy, it gets strong. My heart within me is broken because of the prophecy. Prophet, excuse me. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken. I'm like a drunken man. My, this light is just really bad. Sorry. And like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Elohim and because of the words. Of his holiness. Now, the whore of Babylon causes the world to drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. He's talking the same thing. People are drunken on spiritual stupidity, false doctrine, blasphemies, even like Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, is it, denying the Elohim that bought them. Without realizing it, they're drunken on false doctrine because it pleases the carnal ego that doesn't want to be exposed. Which is why people are fighting me right and left over these videos. <gasps> You're wrong! <laughs> no, it's not! I don't get it. How much simpler can I be? For the land is full of adulterers. Ooh, boy. Full of all sorts of adulterous church houses, not just the sexual aspect of it, but full of those adulterating this word, using it for commercialized business, for reputation amongst the people, these people wanting to make themselves great teachers. The internet's full of this crap too. People trying to raise themselves up as teachers when they're, and Jeremiah's going to go on as, as I go, um, showing you, I never called you Oh, thou internet full of people. My goodness. <laughs> the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Take a look at the church, the religion of Christianity. It's dried up. From what? Where's the prosperity? Where's the power? Where's the greater works that he said we would do? Where? Strife, bitterness, backbiting, confusion, millions of denominations, no matter what verse, 5,000 billion opinions on every little single thing. Everything's dried up because there's no kingdom order. It's every man like Judges says, because there's no king in Israel, every man did that which was right in his own eyes, not this, but pastor this, denomination that. So everyone goes out church shopping 
for whatever denomination their carnal ego wants that caters to their flesh. Oh, I like the Catholic way, so I'm going to be a Catholic. But I don't like this Pentecostal way, but the Baptist, that pleases me. I'm doing what's right in my eyes. I think it's the Methodist way. I think it's the Pentecostal way. It's all dried up. I want to pick and choose what my ego wants to believe. And the father and his son, they're going to be pleased and they're going to save me because I tell you to, God, Jesus, you save me because I'm telling you what I think the truth is. That's the real truth. I was to preach this in the churches and stones are laying around. <laughs> For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Elohim. <sighs> prophet and priest. That's the definition of Christianity today, isn't it? Take a look at this mess we got. I don't believe you. It's what I want. Who cares what we want? This, but you got all these teachers here who caters to people's flesh and they throw money into the collection plate paying for their own destruction and drying up the truth and we wonder why things are a mess. Because of these teachers that didn't go through the cross training and they were never called to begin with. They just wanted position for the people and for others to make money. He never called them. You know a tree by its fruits. Take a look at the fruits of Christianity. There's your fruits. Except there is no good fruit on it. They're all profane. That's the truth. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them a slippery, a slippery way, excuse me, in the darkness, and they should be driven out and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation. Now that's where I wanted to get to. That's where I'm going to, for today, I'm going to stop in Jeremiah 23. That's what I wanted to get to today. There are slippery ways and they fall. Look how, when he's talking about slippery, well, I can interpret this verse to mean that. And this one says, no, 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 it means this. No, 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 it's this. And 5,000 opinions over every scripture. There are slippery ways they can, anyone can teach anything from the Bible and make it believable. I can make you believe that we're supposed to worship the devil if I'm good enough at twisting these scriptures. Talk about evil. We can do whatever we want. But he says, in the year of their visitation. What year? Amos says a famine of preaching is coming. Paul says a falling away is coming. Jeremiah says a year of their visitation is coming. I see a year of exes coming. And a year of judgment coming. Father's going to clean house like the king of kings with a whip and the money changers. Well, this money changers, round two coming. Because the year of the visitation, whoa. You know, I'm not against those who are true, but most are in error and causing these problems. There's very few that's getting it. So that ends part one of Jeremiah 23. I think I've yielded enough for one day.